Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the VTC spool solenoid or formerly called the VTEC solenoid on your third generation Honda CRV equipped with the 2.4 liter iVTEC engine. Now, I believe model years covered here is going to be 2006 through 2011, uh, but generally speaking, any iVTEC enabled CRV basically follows the same design convention. We've got an error code P2647, which is a, a, the A rocker arm actuator system stuck on bank one. And then I've also had an error where it also said the oil pressure uh, on the VTEC sensor was high, which is indicative that that whole spool valve solenoid is acting up. Now, one of the symptoms um, of a bad spool valve assembly is when this vehicle is driving, typically above three to 4,000 RPM, that you know it will actually actuate VTEC depending on the driving conditions needed. And then I guess when you let off the throttle, that then the car starts to chuggle and shake and feels like it's missing and doing all sorts of weird things. And so the spool valve uh, failure is actually quite common. Uh, Honda actually stocks a whole bunch of these, which tells you that this is quite a prevalent issue. Uh, it's fairly easy to replace. Uh, the spool valve is very costly. It's about $510 Canadian. Um, if you talk nicely to your dealership, you might be able to get 5 to 10% off on that part. Now to replace the spool valve assembly, it's fairly straightforward on the 2.4 liter engine. Um, what I've done in the past is that I actually undo this power steering uh, securing bracket here um, so that this gives you a little bit of clearance, but you're pushing it out of the way. And then on the back side of the motor where the passenger side is, this is that whole spool valve assembly. This is the actual solenoid connector, right? And then right here is the oil pressure sensing switch. So you disconnect those two harnesses and then you can undo the solenoid by removing um, well, this wiring harness is also clipped onto it, but uh, essentially three 10 millimeter bolts. Um, it's a little bit awkward working here, but I mean, it is pretty easy to take out. You just kind of do it a little bit blindly. All right, so I've removed the power steering hose bracket, right, which is that's what that looks like right there, right here. That one 10 millimeter bolt, and then I had to use a pick to disconnect this wiring harness off the bracket and then conversely I just disconnected the two two pin connectors um, from the assembly. So next what we're going to have to do is we're going to undo one, two, three, so one, two, three 10 millimeter bolts off the back of this motor to take that spool valve out. Now the part number for the spool valve is Honda part number 15810-RAA dash A03. Now this specific CRV that I'm working on is a 2009, but I would assume that this part should remain the same through years 2006 through 2011. This is the old spool valve. Now, uh, sometimes uh, people have actually rectified their issues by replacing this whole gasket assembly, which comes with this integrated oil filter screen. Um, sometimes when the spool valve doesn't actuate, it's because it doesn't have sufficient oil pressure, and that can be caused by the blockage of the screen if your engine oil has historically been really dirty or if there's a lot of varnish. Now, the owner swapped this gasket out with no success. The original screen was actually clean, but he tried it anyways. Um, and the al second alternative is sometimes this oil pressure sensor switch also goes bad and doesn't give the correct reading to the ECU. Um, this part here is about $150 Canadian. It's quite pricey. Um, again, from my historical experience, you're actually better off just to replace this entire uh, spool valve assembly because it comes with a new gasket, a new pressure sensor, and of course, a brand new solenoid. Now, uh, when I was taking this out, um, you guys saw earlier that the wiring harness passed through here, and then I pointed out that there are three 10 millimeter bolts that hold this assembly or this solenoid to the engine block. They're all the same length, so you don't have to worry about the order, but there's a quick service tip. That wiring harness plugged into here and I got that off with a pick. But then that same wiring harness also has another clip that passes through the side here. And it makes it almost impossible to remove with the solenoid in the way. So what I did was that with this assembly still bolted to the engine, I actually took a 10 millimeter wrench, undid this side bolt, and then undid these three bolts which then allows me to take the solenoid off of this heat shield and then it allows me a little bit more room to get a 
pair of pliers to pinch the little fingers on that wiring harness clip to pop it off. Um, it really sucks. I hate how they design that, uh, but that's one way to get it off without being uh, getting too frustrated. Now, of course, this is the new spool valve, new gaskets, new everything. Um, all you have to do is just apply a thin coat of engine oil to this rubber gasket. Make sure that the mating surfaces on the engine block are clean. I advise you guys use a cloth, not paper towel, because you could be wiping it, and then paper towel bits can get into the ports on the block, which then can jam up this new valve or do engine damage. To get this thing back in and aligned onto the block is a hair or a tad bit awkward, um, but it's not too hard if you just take your time. I took a cloth and I just wiped the mating surfaces of the engine block clean. I lubricated that little gasket o-ring type dealy on the new spool valve and now I'm just going to take my 10 millimeter ratchet and I'm just going to snug up those three 10 millimeter bolts so there's one two and three um, they don't need to be very tight guys um, I think like maybe nine foot pounds so that's just finger tight once that's done we can then clip our wiring harnesses back onto the appropriate sensors and then um, clip the wiring harness retainer um, wraps into this top hole and onto that side hole. Don't forget to replace, reinstall the power steering hose retaining bracket. And just again, finger tight is all it needs. Chances are the hose retaining grommet has slid down, way down there if you can see it. You just need to pull that back up to here and then pop that in. Now after you've successfully completed the repairs, don't forget to use your scan tool to erase any DTCs that are stored in the ECU's memory. So as you can see from my video, that performing a spool valve replacement on your third generation CRV is neither difficult nor time consuming. And the only hindrance to doing this job is really just the sheer cost of that spool valve assembly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you could go ahead and try to replace the screen seal to see if that helps, or even try to replace the oil pressure sensor on that assembly. But realistically, um, these uh, VTEC solenoids or spool valves are extremely common failure points on this particular generation. So if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.